Thank you, Acting President. I will be brief. This omnibus, omnibus, omnibus bill expands the number of people who can exercise authoritarian power under a state of emergency. Thankfully, we, the people of Victoria, have had success in forcing the government to remove arbitrary detention powers from the bill, but we should not forget that they tried to include them and would have included them if they could. In this bill, there are no safeguards to protect Victorians against the abuse of these powers. Over the past few months, we've seen how the words reasonably necessary actually offer no protection at all. The bill still allows the government to grant, to anyone they feel is relevant, the power to close or inspect any place, the power to force anyone to take any action, and the power to take or destroy anything. The bill also allows the government to grant these powers to health workers and worksafe workers who do not have any relevant skills or expertise. This includes the power to violate natural rights without recourse, without a warrant, and with no measures in place to hold authorised officers accountable for misusing powers. It should go without saying that this is a very bad idea. I will never vote in, in support of warrantless search. The state of emergency should have ended on September the 13th. At this point, nobody should be exercising these powers. Instead, the government is extending the number, the pe number of people who can. There are several other measures in this bill that are more reasonable that should probably be, probably be passed with no question. Some of which probably sh should become permanent measures. Except that we've already seen members supporting these reasonable measures as a Trojan horse to sneak through this expansion of state power. This bill could have been split with the non-contentious parts separated out for quick passage, but that would damage the government's na narrative. What is left of it? In March, we said we wouldn't oppose the state of emergency, but we would watch how the government used the powers. Well, I've watched, and I'm not prepared to extend the trust to the government any further. To be fair, I didn't trust the government, or indeed any government, much before this, but I trust them not at all now. We have members here lamenting that we are losing our trust in institutions. The reason we are losing our trust is because our institutions have betrayed our trust, in this case through incompetence and overreach. Northern Victoria has almost no cases. Our towns along the river, most smaller communities in Northern Victoria, have had no cases at any time, yet we must be held back until the whole state can be let out together. How can we trust you when you continue to treat us like this? Having let the virus go, the Premier is now determined to get it back under control, at any cost to the population of Victoria. Dan Andrews is chasing his white whale, and we are all continuing to pay the price. We are continually, continually told that the faster we relinquish our freedom, the sooner we'll be free. I say that any freedom you give up is a freedom you might never get back. This state of emergency may end one day, Although that day appears to continually disappear over the horizon, a mirage continually belong, beyond reach. But having opened Pandora's box, governments will keep coming back to these powers. A year ago, it was unthinkable that the government would treat us like this. Now it's standard operating procedure. Police are already arresting peaceful protesters, picnic goers, and pregnant mothers. Vaccines are not expected to be until at least six months from now, which is what we heard six months ago. The government keeps using phrases like the new normal, but Liberal Democrats will never see this police state as any kind of normal. We will resist these restrictions for as long as they exist.